gets me down, I play my guitar. The rest of the world may follow the rules, but I must follow my heart. You know that feeling, like there's a song in the air and it's playing just for you? A feeling so close, you will reach out and touch it. I never knew I could want something so much, but it's true. Never underestimate the power of music. No one was going to hand me my... How's it going, everybody, and welcome to the Lucky Dog Podcast. This is Elias and... Kelly. How are you doing? About to watch Coco. Doing great. Okay. Are you excited? I'm very excited. What do you know about Coco? Besides, you put it in your upper lip. (laughs) <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I only know what you told me, and that's that it's a really good movie. I've not seen anything about it other than that. Well, <clears throat> have you seen any, like, marketing materials or advertising? Have you seen, uh, I guess, TV or uh, internet ads for it? Uh-uh. No? No. Hmm. I've heard from people. That's about it. Have you heard from other people other than myself? Angie loved it. Oh, Angie? Uh, is, uh, who is Angie? I think it's relevant to the culture of the movie. Angie is an ex-co-worker who is... An ex-co-worker? Hispanic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. So, Angie happens to be Hispanic, and so I thought that was relevant because this happens to be a predominantly Mexican heritage traditional style movie if that makes sense mm-hmm. it's based off of Mexican heritage and so uh, I think that it's a underserved market for one thing and it's uh, something that needs to be factored into why this movie was even made which is the Latino Hispanic market is like one third of the major markets they're served and so they're trying to you know market to those Mm -hmm. demographics now so I think it's important that they produce something on this scale you know showing uh, Mexican culture I guess it kind of bothers me that they stick to the day of the dead theme because that's kind of the only theme they know it's like dry desert theme day of the dead you know style but day of the dead has a lot of interesting stuff too though but like all the face painting and the it, yeah, yeah, it does. Did you see the, the book outfits of, and stuff? Did you see the Book of Life? No, but my kids w- watched it and they loved it. They loved it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm really interested to see if they're going to be just as interested in this because I think that they have both uh, similar stylistic flares. Yeah, I didn't see the Book of Life, but I heard <clears> there's <throat> like a ton of similarities to it. So I'm anxious to see what you think. Uh, what you think your kids are going to think about this movie because I think this movie has a lot of adult themes for such a a family quote unquote movie yeah so I think that if you're an adult going to this you're going to get more of a benefit from what they're saying to the audience you know Mm -hmm. well um this isn't your first time watching it yeah this isn't my first time watching it either this is my I think my second Mm mm-hmm and I've been wanting you to s- watch it. You saw it in theaters. Yeah. Long. And now we're watching it finally at home. Uh, yeah, I, it was... Uh, I really enjoyed my first my first viewing experience. I won't go too in-depth about it because I don't want to sound uh, too skewed or anything. But I think uh, the rewatchability in it is going to be interesting. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm anxious to see your reaction. Mine? Yeah, I don't know. You might. I'm sure I'm gonna cry. No, you know. You said you said a lot no. of people cried. Oh, I heard some large sniffles. You know the the, the you know the. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It really it really depends on how into it you are. So we got yourself some coffee, freshly brewed. <laughs> we get to watch it at home. Which yeah, is my favorite. It's, yeah, it's pretty much the only <laughs> way you're gonna watch anything. 
No. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, this is uh, the pre-show ending. Uh, we're going to watch the movie and we'll be right back. Do you mind? <gasps> Welcome to the land of the dead. Dr. Cleo! You gotta stay with me, boy. This isn't a dream then. First impressions after watching Coco. Uh, I wish I knew more about the actors. Oh. I, I, like, I love the movie. It was a really good movie. But I wish I would have known, like, whose voice was who. Okay. Because I feel like I would have, if I knew who the actor was, I feel like I would feel a little bit more connected to the characters in the movie. Not connected, but like, okay, have well, more of an opinion, I guess. Well, uh, did you know any of the actors in uh, Moana? The Rock. The Rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did it make you like the movie a little bit more, but knowing he was in it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um. All right. Well. But you, but you said overall you liked it. Yeah, I loved it. All right. Uh, tell me some good things about it. Uh, don't sit here and quiz me. Talk with me. Don't quiz me on stuff. Oh, well, okay. So I don't like that. No, no, no <laughs> problem. So, uh, this is my second time seeing it, and I th- still think it holds up to a second viewing as uh, just a masterpiece. You know, I think that a movie that can uh, have you el- elicit uh, an, a response, mm-hmm. whether it's Laughter, you know, th- you know, uh, suspense, uh, thrilling, horror, you know, it, as long as it's making you feel something, you know, sadness. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So that's what I'm talking about. The uh, emotional response that this movie allows you to get from it, and I felt it the first time watching it. You know, it's. Uh, this is a spoiler review, by the way. Filled. <laughs> he still said it wrong. Spoiler filled. I liked that it was. I liked that it was mostly funny. I'm glad it wasn't like sad start to finish. Okay. Which that hardly ever happens anyway, but still. Well, for uh, an animation, you know, family movie, would you have said it? Would you have expected it to have hit such a heavy notes? I mean, no. I wasn't expecting it to be that sad. That was really sad. <laughs> I mean, if you cr- if you cry during a cartoon movie, it's kind of has to be really sad to cry during a cartoon movie that's partly funny. Yeah. So, do you think that like you can't do both? Like, we're also watching. We're in the middle of watching The Big Sick, and I don't recall feeling a quarter of that response to it. No. And these are with real people. Yeah. I could have cried during the big sick. This? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't... When she <clears throat> finds the box of pictures. <laughs> that part? Yeah, and he, he's Wait, having... Wait, that's a spoiler? Uh, yeah, well, we're spoiling we're ta- everything. We spoil everything. Oh, we spoil it. We've got to change because you make me watch everything. Oh, that's, if you we, that's why me, we got to do the podcast. If you would let me watch one thing and binge it, this wouldn't happen. Okay. But I could have cried then. <laughs> I feel I feel like I cry more during regular movies or TV shows than I would a cartoon. So right. So okay. So I guess it really doesn't matter now that if it's an animation or not. Yeah. So yeah. all right. Well, um, tell me tell me some things that you weren't so happy about. I didn't like how long it took for us to find out who the bad guy was. I feel like that took a long time. And okay. it was right at the end of the movie. Okay. Because it let the kid kind of go the entire movie with thinking that guy was his grandfather. Or great-great-grandfather. Right. Did you know... And he right, thinks that's who he's supposed to be, like, did you following know right off, his, the bat, right off the bat that it was him? I thought I was, like, going along with the kid. I thought that was his great-great-grandfather. But, like, the first, like, ten minutes he didn't know. What do you mean he didn't know? At the first ten minutes, he all he knew was 
somebody so he knew his grandfather was an artist no no no, no. i kind of thought the whole time even before he it found out i was like this is gonna end up being be yeah yeah i when i had i didn't even see the the trailers or anything like that and i was like this is so obvious i don't even know why they're playing it like it's a a reveal yeah because he keeps keeps talking about wanting to be a mu- musician and then the only other musician anyone's talking about is that guy right so right. it kind of yeah, I was just like, oh, okay, no, that's his grandfather. So, great, great grandfather. But you also, I heard you call the twist or the, the plot twist where his you find out his real grandfather was poisoned. Yeah, it was Hector. And it was Hector that was his real grandfather. What? Uh, I hate how long that took. You did? Yeah. I, 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 f- I found about ten minutes where we could have shaved, mm-hmm. but... Other than that, I thought a lot of it was necessary. Yeah. Like, when he first met Hector, and Hector was like, yeah, I just played with him. Why didn't he tell... Like, that's kind of an important thing. Yeah, it was a little bit... Oh, hold on. It was yeah. a little bit hidden. Hector didn't know that he poisoned him. Yeah, well, at the point, at the at that time, he didn't oh, know. Oh, okay. But you do okay. think that yeah. they would have been better friends, right? No. Why not? Because, not? heck, the guy... Ernesto had to hide the fact that he poisoned Hector. Yeah, but the, but in the afterlife, they should have been better friends, right? mm No, because then Hector well, would have... They cheers, didn't they? Before they left? What do you mean before they left? Well, before Hector died, I thought they left on a good note. Yeah, because Hector didn't know that the guy killed him. Right, so shouldn't they be friends in the afterlife, is what I'm saying. No, because you know the videos that play... The videos that play, where the kid brought it to his attention... Right. The two guys in the videos right. cheered. I think Ernesto knew that Hector would figure it out. Uh, well, I if just, he saw the video, I just assumed that they would. He could see the video outside. You know, I, I, I just assumed that they would be friends in the afterlife part. I guess you're right. I don't know. I need to rewatch that to see. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I um. So you. I've been comparing this movie a lot to the previous year's uh, Moana. Mm-hmm. That was one of my favorite movies. I feel like these are. I feel like they're compl- totally different. Okay, I feel so a lot the, different. Yeah, uh, apples and orange. Yeah. Just. Mm-hmm. Oranges. I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, why do you think that? I don't remember. Did we cry during Moana? Was there mm-hmm. anything when her grandmother? I felt like a. I like the, how how both of them are kind of have like the whole spiritual connection thing, in them. Yeah. It's not. It's not like disconnected. Yeah. To her, uh, I guess. I guess. I guess. I I guess. Uh, atheist point of view where there wouldn't be an a- afterlife. Yeah. I don't think that. Well, technically, this kind of goes into a atheist point of view if you go to the double afterlife because it's like people in in the Coco world and the real world will die and then from the heaven sin they'll die and then you, it's like they don't it's the exist. final death it's is the it final that death death yeah yeah so I, it was deep it was deep I felt like it was a lot deeper than Moana yeah there was I, a lot more like tugging at the heartstrings than there was in Moana right the like in times where somebody was dying, like a, a side character, that one guy that randomly got offed, that got me again. What was it? You remember that guy? Oh, oh the guy oh, in dirty, the hammock. Dirty Dan. It wasn't Dirty Dan. The guy <laughs> he in the was hammock. Dirty Dan. Yeah, the guy in the hammock. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I can't believe this guy got me again. Yeah. <laughs> they had to sing him a good night story, and he just faded away. I think I think the whole like they're rem- they're forgetting me part. That's sad. I mean, I, yeah. Like that hurts. It's really deep. <laughs> yeah, because uh, it it kind of hits on like a real level, and especially on like from Coco having experiencing like a, I think she's having Alzheimer's of some sort. Uh, it's just like a real disease that people actually have to you know deal with. Yeah, because at one point she remembers who her father is, but she forgets who her daughter is. Because doesn't she ask? Doesn't she say something like, "Who are you?" Because <laughs> at I don't the remember. beginning she yeah. asks who. She is asks that, her daughter. And that's her daughter? Yeah. Because I was curious who the heck that was at first. I didn't realize it was her. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of grandmas. The, the, the uh, 
The grandmother that chased everyone around smacking yeah, him with a shoe. Coco's That's daughter. Coco's daughter. Yeah. But then, I I don't know why, but I was thinking, like, where's... if it, Whose mom is that? Like, the woman who's smacking everyone with the shoe? It was either the... It was the, one of his folks. I know, but I how tell. come we didn't get to see, like, both families? Like, the mom's... Like, say, if that was the dad's mom, where's the mom's parents at? <laughs> there's not enough time for I'm that. Ju- I know there's not. It's <laughs> just me thinking... Ain't nobody too- got time for that. No, it's just me thinking too Ain't far got time into for that. it. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not think about stuff like that? Like, well, where are their parents? Well, I Where's was, that family? I was thinking about it a little bit, but I just kind of figured, you know... You, some of these cliche big families they in these movies they don't really they just show you oh aunts cousins uncles they just want to say they got a big family and that's all you really have to know I didn't like how the whole I didn't like it when she broke his guitar that made me mad yeah that was uh, that like that's really unnecessary for we, one we I don't care how strong your family beliefs are you don't you don't <laughs> tear up people's things <laughs> that's mean that made that hurt my feelings for the kid but like he's not married and with child so why does why is him wanting to leave to be a musician why is it such a big deal oh. he's not leaving a wife and a kid behind he's he's a kid i guess they're just implying that music the music industry makes you leave your family regardless i don't know it i was, feel like that's a matter of like character i don't feel like that's a matter of fact well, yeah I, I i think that that was just the uh the one lady's beliefs and it trickled down from also the great grandmother to the grandmother to the grandmother the the great great grandmother who was the skeleton how does she not know the full story when they've been in the afterlife together this whole time yeah i've been uh or why didn't she know at least some part of it like why was she still mad at him and was like, I don't care if it is true. You shouldn't have left. <laughs> well, he died. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, I definitely think they should have had some sort of conversation in the afterlife. I'm not really sure what Hector's been doing. You, you know, know how it would... It kind of seemed like he was a bum. Yeah, in the afterlife. Why was he a bum? I didn't understand that. He wasn't a bum in his real life, so, yeah. He was a bum. And it, it seemed like everyone took on their character traits. Oh, I don't know. It's because before she died... She ripped his picture off, or Coco did, oh, and they to don't keep it. it. And so his wife was Stop. mad, so she quit telling well, good things about him. And it seems that material things were given from the real life to the afterlife. Hmm? Because there was a big-ass room of Ernesto's guitars and food and stuff. He said this has been given yeah. to him. I, I figured that was from the real world, because, yeah. because the Day of the Dead... They bring them food and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I figured that's what they were getting it from. And that would explain why Hector is a bum. Yeah. I kind of want to know the... I want I kind of would like to know the... What is it? Like why the skeleton wife had to tell her daughter not to remember her dad or all that. Like just because he died. Like you know how they would go back and show like him with Coco as a kid? Right. There was never any, other than at the very beginning, where the little streamers are showing the story about how he left. It still, like, at the closer to the end of the movie, it still went back whenever he was talking about Coco and showed him singing to Coco, but it didn't show anything about the wife. Her her coming out of nowhere with, oh, well, I used to sing too. It came out of nowhere. Well, it was, I kind of assumed she had music talent or abilities. Or that everyone kind of did, just because his family does. You know, it's like, oh, don't use our secret hidden ability or something like that, even though we're really good at it. But I'm assuming those flashbacks of Hector and Coco are of them before Hector left. Well, yeah. And so Hector died, and then she got pissed off at him during that time and just grew, had anger you know, grow from year after year. And I'm not really sure if they were clear about if she ever... I don't think they ever showed that she found out. That he died? Yeah. Well, no, she didn't. From poisoning? No, she didn't know until Miguel told her. Well, either way, he still ran away, right? 
Hector, no, Hector, he didn't run away. Hector did, yeah. No, he left with Ernesto for a little bit, and then he was trying to go home. He was trying to go but home. But I don't think he just up and left, right? Or was that... I think they still left. You see, because mm-hmm. cause she, she was pretty explosive by saying, you know, I forgive you. I don't forgive you. Mm-hmm. She said, I don't forgive you, but I'll help you. Mm-hmm. Which I thought was kind of a big deal. Yeah. You know, it, I guess it's just, you know, teaching people you don't have to forgive people. But, you know, Hector was poisoned, but he was trying to go home. Yeah. You need to factor. Okay, so she didn't know all that. Right. She didn't know those things. Yeah. So I although, guess he, that's, although he was gone. I'm not sure if that answers that, you know. where my curiosity was, I guess. Yeah. Um, okay, so tell me some other things you didn't, you weren't too fond of. You said you pacing might have been a little long i thought there was like 10 minutes that could have gotten could have gotten uh taken out of the midsection i was feeling a little saggy you know in the weighty area the what (laughs) (laughs) what (laughs) use words that i know what you're talking about sorry (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all right, all right, collect yourself. <laughs> you collect yourself. Collect. Anyway, in the what area <laughs> of the movie? In the middle? <laughs> yeah, so the middle of the uh, movie, I felt that it was kind of, it felt a little bit like I objective, don't... like, gotta go here, gotta grab this, gotta go do this, gotta do the thing, gotta beat the thing, gotta do this, gotta beat the bad guy. It kind of felt like a, a, a video game at some some parts. I kind of, I liked it. You liked it. I liked getting to see all the other, ca- all the different characters that kid had to run into before getting to Ernesto. Okay. Um, I oh, like. Was that even his name? Ernesto, the main villain. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ernesto. I think it was. Are we sure? We're gonna go with Ernesto. Okay. Or <laughs> or Ernesto. Ernesto. <laughs> Ernesto. I don't know. Ernesto. No, no, that's not right. Um, I don't think so. Ernesto. What movie were you watching? Be quiet. <laughs> Ernesto. Okay. It just for a second I was like, but wasn't there other words to his name? Yeah, yeah. You gotta remember me or remember him. <laughs> I want to see what I want because we should call him by his full name. <laughs> if it because Ernesto was, de la Cruz. Oh, there it? you go. There did, you go. Yeah. Did you not watch any? Of no, it? I couldn't remember. I didn't. The what is it? Say it again. <laughs> oh, it's, what a, it's is a one. It? It's a one and done. No, do it one more time. One and done. Nesto. You got this. It's not. What is it? You got this. It's not. Impo- it's not important. It's, it's not. But I just would like to know. Next, but uh, Della. Yeah, you got this. Uh, it's, it's, Della Cruz. You, no one cares about the I pronunciation. I Because for a minute, it felt like this we were like calling a... him the wrong name. Because the kid through the whole movie, the kid call him, called him Ernesto. No, he didn't. He called him his papa. No, he didn't. Well, I was kind of sad about that anyway. De La Cruz. He called him De La Cruz the whole time. Yeah, he, the whole time. Yeah, but I... That's okay, why I'm Okay, so here. second viewing. Second viewing. It and was different. And you still can't pronounce his name right. No, no, no. That's not... That's not <laughs> no, we're segueing on from that. No, so the second viewing on this movie was pretty interesting. So... I had, you know, a kind of an emotional reaction the first time watching it. You know, I was like, "Wow, this is a, this is a, a great movie." You know, it's got some heart. Even the first five minutes, I was laughing. You know. Yeah. I and from a mile away, I saw we were gonna have to deal with uh, Mama Coco's death. Oh really? I, I didn't kn- think about it. I I knew it from because I'd uh, I'd seen parts of Up, and I knew that they use o- older folks and memory and stuff. So, uh, I was like, "Wow, we're, this is gonna be heavy later." And I, I didn't was, even think about her in the crying. entire time when I was in the world. I was like, all, I was thinking of all these like points that we've had to go through from like, you know, like losing Hector's friend to uh, finding out his who his grandfather is. I th- like I thought there was like four or five different emotional points in the movie where, you know. You better grab the tissues. Yeah. Like, uh, I thought, you know, the, uh, okay, so let me think about it. The, uh, Hector's friend, 
That got me again. Did Did you feel anything during that? The guy in yeah. the hammock. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, the guy was on screen for two minutes. I didn't. But then again, like three minutes. The uh, Miguel was sitting there like smiling at Hector <clears throat> once he realized Hector could sing and play. So right. that kind of did it take you out. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it it uh. This guy's death, I guess, got me again. I don't remember too much about the first time I watched the uh, that sp- specific scene, but... Watching it a second time, does it kind of... Like, you kind of get, like, a, a was, reminder, like, oh, here it comes. Yeah, I was. I had knew that it, that part was coming, but I was like, did this for, feel organic, and could it, it just have happened immediately after the train station? Or after, you know, he was doing... He was putting makeup on him and stuff. Yeah. I felt like a couple things could have been cut in between there, but I thought it was necessary to have the, uh... That scene of that the banjo guy passing away. Or, not the banjo guy, you know, Hector's friend. Yeah. The hammock guy. The hammock guy. Um... Because it showed... Who did he meet after that? It showed stakes, you know? I don't like when, uh... Something doesn't show stakes. I like it right there at the end when all the sad scenes come. It kind of bounced back and forth a good bit though, because what? he that guy passed like he went through his final death in the hammock, and then after that, after that, didn't he meet the lady, the lady that was like hosting all the dancers and stuff? She was funny, and he like gave her an idea. That was before. Was it before? It was before. I thought they could have cut that. I liked that part. Did I thought you? it was after. Because no, I thought it went from before. being sad to that. Yeah. No. It went, it went from... Damn it. Well, they did do a, a real fluctuation. They made sure that it was like, sad scene, happy. Sad scene, happy. Yeah. I mean, like, they knew that this was a heavy movie and they had to space some things. Mm-hmm. Which is actually another reason why I think they put, uh, what's it called? Um, those bright animals. Yeah. I thought those first time viewing, I was like the okay. soul animals. Yeah, I was like these look like they're drawn for four year olds. You know, they yeah. just they didn't they didn't to grab attention. They just didn't they just look like something, it would only something to watch grab I guess. a kid's yeah. attention. I guess. Yeah, I thought that this and to sell toys and stuff like that. I'm always skeptical about that. But uh, second viewing, oh, I had this feeling a little bit toward the end of the second one. Uh, of the first viewing, sorry. Uh, they're almost needed because the plot lines are so heavy. You're dealing with so much death and, you know, kind of depressing type stuff. Mm-hmm. It, uh, you need something bright to look at on, you know. It'd be nice looking at some 3D glasses on some of those, you know. Yeah, it kind of gave like a uh, hero kind of feel too. Yeah. Like the cat, the flying cat. Yeah, I also, I didn't really like the, uh, the, very end because I, I knew that that cat was going to come in and save him when he was thrown off the uh, cliff by into the thing Dela Cruz oh the the cat came in like three times that I, I had another another pod a couple other podcasts had uh, mentioned this that why did she have the biggest one why did she have the biggest and best I don't know and, yeah it's, and that's like, not really no one else had like almost any it was like his family had the only Oh, I mean, we just wouldn't have seen. Well, we I did see the, a lot of other the ones. The monkey. But who's who's was the monkey? The monkey was the Dela Cruz's uh, designer, set designer. The lady. Yeah. The lady. The monkey was funny though. He was funny. But, uh, yeah. Uh, How come Hector didn't have one, or was it the dog? Did Hector have one? I don't mm. think Hector had one. Was it the dog? I don't know. No, well, the dog is technically Miguel's, right? I would say so. And did that dog die? No. There were some things. It, it, like, died, and then I guess it came back. And I thought the wings were... Well, I thought the dog, like him, even though he was alive, he could still come into the... The world, the, um... What was that? After death? Afterlife? Yeah, the afterlife. The dog went in there like he did, yeah, being but alive. Yeah, came, came back. I... Because I was checking at the end. I think... Maybe the animals can go back and forth like what's his face did. Miguel. 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 Yeah. 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 Because the cat came through into the real world and was a cat, a normal Where cat. Where was the cat in the fake world or the? the it was her cat? big cat. That was the cat. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> 
Remember, wow. remember how it showed the dog coming and then the it cat came? like a dog, like, meow. <laughs> <laughs> did you see the, 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 we did see the ribbit bunny thing. That was pretty funny. That's a, it's a frog. A, a rib, toad. A ribbit bunny thing? Yeah. A toad right. bunny. That was really funny. <laughs> but whose who's spirit creature was that? That was probably Dirty Dane's. <laughs> He's, what was his name? <laughs> no one knows. He was just Dirty Dan. Dirty Dan. <laughs> R.I.P. Uh, Dirty Dan. Hector called him something. Anyway. Pete. Pete. No. Pinhead. no. Pete. Pinhead Larry. <laughs> Pinhead Pete. <laughs> no. No, he didn't. <laughs> um... I feel like there was something close to the end that I didn't like. Uh, the taking so long to give him the blessing where I like jumped because I, I was oh, like, hurry up! Because I knew yeah, that I got you Ernesto that. was going to get him. <laughs> it was, was an obvious moment. He was like, no! Nah, and it was like... Today! M- making me want to like ball my fist up and like, hurry up! And like, shake. Yeah, shake the kid. <laughs> I did, there was a few times I was just like, this needs to... It felt like three endings. Yeah. It like, like it's about like you feel like it should be ending and then all of a sudden boom. Yeah. It's oh, happens. not today. Oh, not I didn't, today. I liked oh, it because it was a good not. movie, but I didn't like all of that suspense. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't need all of that. Yeah. I kind of liked being sad at the end. You did. Sad, but like on a good note. Happy. Yeah, because he gets to play music and mm-hmm. Coco gets to go see her dad. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a happy, bittersweet ending. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think about your kids? What do you? What do you I think Kyson would love it. Kyson would cry. Which one is that? My oldest. oldest or yeah. Oldest or youngest? Kyson's the oldest. Okay. Okay. Kyson would cry. Riker. You, you think he would understand? I don't know that he would understand, but it would. He old, would old, feel it. Your oldest would understand. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't know that he would understand why he felt it, but he would feel it. Kyson would. Okay. Because he's a little bit more tender-hearted. Okay. And he cried during. Uh, home with the alien and Rihanna plays the little girl home G- uh, Sheldon off of Big Bang Theory he plays an alien you're gonna have to watch it I don't know about that Kyson cried during that, that movie because that. the alien just the girl wanted to find her mom and Kyson was like you can't help her find her mom yeah. <laughs> he was like crying <laughs> well, yeah you need to I think you should put this on for them I think if anything they're gonna love the music yeah yeah. Riker would like the accents. The accents. Yeah. yeah. He would love it. And then yeah. it would make Riker want to dance. Riker would be dancing the whole time yeah. until the sad part came on. And then he would sit down because he wouldn't understand why everyone was sad. Oh, yeah. It's a it's a heavy movie. And I I think it's it had to have been a difficult movie to market. Wait, why? Well, just the way it looks is bright. It's shiny and everything. He's There's a dancing skeleton and a young boy singing a guitar. Yeah. On a big orange leafy road, you know, it's like that's what the that's what the poster looks like. It's like, how do you market that? Like it, it, it sounded difficult. And I think it. They did it I, after Halloween. I too. don't. I don't. Re- I don't know. And this, I after don't know. Halloween. What do you mean? It came out after Halloween. I believe so. Which is even more difficult in my mind. I feel like it would have been a good Halloween. I movie. feel like it would have been more appealing to people who understand the celebration of the Day of the Dead. Oh, absolutely. Oh, in comparison to the Day of the Dead, and we were talking about earlier the uh, <clears throat> Book of Life. Yeah. What was it called? I don't remember what that was about, though. It, I know it was similar, like kind of about the Day of the Dead, right? Right. Because I remember it having the face, the skeleton face paint and stuff. Right. But I don't, I don't remember, I didn't watch it. Well, did it, I can't do the, any comparisons. The Day of the Dead is like... Did you watch it? I've only seen, like, snippets of it. I haven't even heard a full song from it. And I wasn't fond of the animation style. Hmm. I remember it kind I of... I thought it looked exactly the same, kind of. Except this had a little bit more Moana. Like the people. Like the characters Detail. looked. Detail? Yeah. Okay. I, I'm not really sure the the type of. Uh, well, hold on, Book of Life is it not all skeletons? Are they not all skeletons like they're in the afterlife, mm-hmm. or is it kind of like this? They transition. I thought they transitioned because I do remember. I thought I saw some live 
All I know is they're playing a guitar too, and it was oddly yeah. There's sim- music. It was oddly similar to this, mm-hmm. but I, I think I like. I'm gonna like this better, even if I see the Book of Life. I'm kind of biased. Probably. I just haven't heard the same kind of appeal. Yeah, I want to ask Angie. When I was sitting in the, uh, the theater, everyone was bawling. Really. I mean, during most of the scenes, yeah. And you know, I'm, I'm like a. You know, taller, you bigger, taller, bigger guy. So I was like sitting next to like a seven year old or something. Like I was like, I ain't gonna cry. But she like, did. I, was like, I ain't gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> but you really did. I was like, <laughs> and you cried this time. I was like, no, don't. No, 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 no. <laughs> I got your head wet. <laughs> no, you <laughs> wiped my your face yeah. on my jacket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, <laughs> it got me again. The, I haven't even had another emotional response from uh, any sort of media since then. Yeah. <clears throat> like, hmm. even, you know, music, podcast, TV, film, media. I don't, I wouldn't say that I cried in Moana, but I know when her grandmother turned into the stingray, the stingray. and, like, followed her out to sea or whatever, right. and when she sang that song, I just felt like a big... Yeah, you kind of felt like a little whoosh. Yeah. Yeah, a little watery. No, I don't think I cried. Yeah, it was, yeah but it's a little still... watery, but not crying. Yes, yeah, sure. Yes, yeah, sure. Yes, yeah, sure. Yes, yeah, sure. But what I'm... did you not like? What didn't I like? Mm-hmm. Um, like the one thing that you would completely take out that you didn't like. Mm-hmm. Get rid of it. That's crazy because normally I have something I really like to point pinpoint on. You know, like writing script, plot pacing. If I wasn't so kind of antsy these days, I would say more more these days I'm a little antsy. You know, just like if it's, if I'm not loving the movie, I don't want to see. I don't want to see two and a half hours of it. You know, two hours. Yeah. I want to love the movie to see two hours of it. Yeah. This was, I think, about hour forty, forty eight, forty five. I would have cut ten minutes of it off. Uh, it. Yeah, I didn't think it was necessary to go what? see Ernesto's, uh, Ernesto's, what's it called? His set designer before. Yeah. Because they, it, I think all they did there was, uh, they showed the set design that we eventually saw later, which I guess it's kind of like a sneak peek if you want to call it, but uh, you could see that, or foreshadowing I think it's technically called. We saw the set design, and then we saw the band. I guess the band is necessary. Yeah. He needs the band to get into the... I was expecting him to win that, and that would have been the way he got in. Oh, yeah. I just thought there was a couple ways they could have just got it, got to Ernesto a little faster. Yeah. I feel like he should have won the... They should have had him winning that little yeah. contest and getting straight in to see Ernesto. Right. Like, it, it was kind of a jumble how him and uh, his aunt and what's-his-face, uh, Hector, all kind of came together. Mm-hmm. I guess that could have happened faster, but, you know. And I, when he first met Ernesto, I was expecting, like, a I don't believe you kind of thing. Oh, really? Ernesto not believing him that he was his great-grandson. I think that would have just elongated the movie and made it, it yeah. two hours, but I guess. I was still expecting it. I, I, I kind of thought I felt it coming. I don't know if, did Ernesto believe him? Yeah. The he, whole time, he was like, and then he was like, "No, Ernesto." He, had he to was cover lying. He was lying. He was lying. He Ernesto was, was lying. So he's going around showing people this is his nephew, even though he, or his uh, great great, great, great grandson, grandson, even though he knew it wasn't. Yeah. Dick. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, that guy's terrible. Hold on. So technically, can you die again in the afterlife if you die the way that you died in the real life? Evidently, because. Those got, skeletons were all getting knocked around and bones were flying everywhere and none of them were really dying. They were all just blah, 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 coming back together. Yeah, Hector, How come he couldn't? Hector did get, like, he fell from, like, a cliff and broke into, like, a thousand pieces and came back together. Yeah, so how come Ernesto can't come out from under that clock? Because I we, thought the whole thing was if you're in the afterlife and you're still alive, <laughs> it's because you're remembered. Yeah, um, and it appears he's still remembered. He's being forgotten, though. Or they're trying to forget. I would have just taken down that statue at the very end. I, know, I feel like it would have took a lot for the people on the outside of the yeah. afterlife to forget about him. 
Well, I know that, and it would be difficult to prove too. I don't know. Because even if you do come back from the afterlife and tell the real story, people that's they might not remember the good thing about him, but they still remember. Yeah, and they still like the music or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. what killed him is what I guess my question would. I be. I don't think he died, and uh, I think uh, another thing to uh, to cover before we, you know, cut this wrap this call this a good one mm-hmm. um I don't think they should make a sequel really I don't want to see a sequel I think some some of the best artwork, I wonder how they could though like what could come after that because <clears throat> Ernesto Miguel could was... still be alive right I just don't want like, I hope Ernesto they don't turn I, hope, I really hope they don't turn it into a series that's what I'm saying is I don't want like Ernesto's revenge and stuff like that you know? or him to get to him get to stay alive and keep trying to revenge of the Ernesto yeah I don't like that <laughs> I'm not gonna watch it I'm not gonna let my kids watch it oh you're gonna let them watch it no I'm not you're gonna love it forbid it the mouse they wants what the mouse wants they do not have my blessing the mouse wants what the mouse wants therefore they can't get home without my <laughs> blessing <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> they can't. I uh yeah, I didn't like the leaves either. The leaves? I like the leaves. I like the visual statement of it, but I just thought like anyone can just grab a leaf and just like poof I'm gone. Well, d- it kind of went with the leaves that were in the real life. Yeah, I saw that. And I liked it. I liked I liked the visuals. I like the it. the big leaf bridge that Cuz did you see what happened to Yeah, Hector. Hector when he tried to cross no, no, it and he I, couldn't? I loved it. I just didn't like the actual that's like the way to go. Grab a leaf and you're gone. What did you, what would you rather it be? Couldn't tell you. <laughs> I, I don't have anything better. I'm not a script writer. <laughs> and that's why I'm not. Yeah, you are. But it just seemed a little like, oh, bag of leaves. Psh, gone. I know it's not that. I wonder what made them choose leaves. The I mean, the visuals were stunning for it. Why so. not like a sugar skull thing? <laughs> You don't want to imply sugar. You don't want to like be like sugar. No, that's what they're called. That's what that fainted, painted skull is called. It's a sugar skull. Oh uh, well, yeah, we don't want to do that. Okay. Well, I I do I agree with you. The uh, the <laughs> orange or the yellow whatever orange leaves were. I like the way they looked. Kind of reminded me of Halloween. Yeah. A little bit, but uh, overall. Uh, I don't know. Some of the uh, shrines that they had of all the dead people with all the candles. Yeah. I'm sure there's another word for it that I'm not I'm not using the correct word, but right. like kind of reminded me of like a Valentine's Day thing. I don't know why. Valentine's yeah, Day. Yeah. It was odd. Because I was just like, oh, hearts and red and candles. I think it could have been released in March. Yeah. Like a nice March release. It's I, I I can't exactly remember another one, but I want to say maybe Finding Nemo or something. As I wish I knew animated. more about the Day of the Dead, because huh. then maybe I would understand why it came out when it did, or why it didn't come out on Halloween. I don't know exactly. They why. could have released. What is the actual Day of the Dead? Is it Halloween? Halloween is based off of the Day of the Dead, which is I believe I believe this. I, I don't take my word for it. I'm gonna get a bajillion emails saying, "Holy hell, you're you a dumbass. are wrong. You're a dumbass." Yeah. Okay. So I know you're not a dumbass. I'm a dumbass. But if you're wrong, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. It doesn't make you. It doesn't make you a dumbass. Okay, yeah. So anyway, the uh, <laughs> you can forward those emails to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna forward them all to you. you know, I'm, I'm <laughs> and then they're never gonna want any you, of your. They're never gonna listen to any more of your badge. podcast. <laughs> you can take that badge. <laughs> no, anyway. Anyway. So and the, uh, I think Halloween is actually an American holiday that is based off of the Day of the Dead. Because we take everything. From Mexico. Mm-hmm. And we kind of turned it into a holiday. Of course we did. I don't rem- And I don't know why we give candy, because I think in the actual holiday, the Day of the Dead holiday, we give them food. You do. You leave... Yeah. Uh, you leave them food and right. flowers and... Right. Things to things like for them to be remembered and not it's not supposed to be for us to get and receive stuff. Yeah, it's kind of like most of the American holidays. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where we gotta give me, give me, give me, give me. Because look who created. Look give me, who give thought me, give them me, up. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which, give me. Yeah, and if you don't give it to me, I'm gonna take it. Oh, oh it's most Americans. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, I need it. <laughs> All right, so um, any last um. Uh, Last words for uh, the Coco review? 
I loved it, and I'm going to go home and make my kids watch it. <laughs> and then I'm going to ask them. I'm going to get my phone, and I'm going to record their reactions after. Oh. I would really like to know Kyson's. Kyson would sit down and talk with me about it. Yeah? Yeah. You should ask him if he understands it. Yeah. I'd like for him to get a better understanding of why he's sad during certain movies, especially one like that. Not like Home. <laughs> home is like about al- it's about aliens. It's not something that actually happens in the world. Is this an animation? Yeah. Okay, so I just didn't see this. You know Sheldon off of Big Bang Theory? Yes, I know Sheldon. Okay, he's he plays this little alien, and then Rihanna plays this little girl, and something happens, all the aliens come to Earth, she loses her mom, and he's supposed to be helping her find her mom. Did you cry during this? No. Oh, okay. But I also didn't sit down and watch it like Kyson did. Kyson's watched it multiple times, and he cries every time. Okay, well, he might... We have to test, you know? We might have to give him a couple different movies and stuff like that. Yeah. Set him down, make him watch all the sad movies, and be like, now why do you think yeah. that you're sad? <laughs> Did you see the, the dog that said... The, the... I think it was Spot, the dog movie. Mm-mm. You didn't see that? I think it was Frankie Muniz was the... Mm-mm. I don't remember, but that, that movie... I like the dog in this one, but he was a hairless dog, apparently. Because remember at one point he was like, he doesn't have any hair. <laughs> or he says, he doesn't have any fur. Yeah, he's a naked dog. Why? I want to know what why he's naked. Like, why didn't it's why didn't he get to have fur? Homeless dogs. It's like a... It's like a he popular. was crazy. I liked the dog. And his tongue going everywhere. I liked the dog. I liked oh, how crazy he was. Yeah, he was crazy. He was he was drawn very similarly to the, uh, the chicken and, and Moana. Moana. Yeah, you said that. Which kind of bothers me a little bit because... They're kind of making him a little slightly retarded. No, I he's not. I wouldn't say that. I'd say crazy. Are we crazy. laughing at retarded animals right no, now? No, because that's not what they did. That's not. No, it's not. You were wrong. I was just curious. They, he's crazy, like like hyperactive. And okay, yeah, he, I would agree. Silly. Yeah. And crazy. Yeah. That's funny. But what about the chicken? That guy. That guy got some problems. <laughs> What happened to that chicken when it was born? Something happened to it. He got dropped and almost eaten about a thousand times during yeah, the Yeah, so the that would cause a lot of damage, man. You wouldn't act right either. <laughs> would you act right? Uh, no, his, his his eyes about popping out. He <laughs> 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 Oh, love. Oh, God. Oh, my God. I like the dog better than the chicken. Oh, really? Do you not? Oh, I think I'm a chicken guy. No, I don't like the chicken. I feel like, uh, but I do feel like the chicken would sell if it was made into a toy. Yeah. The dog wouldn't sell. Why? Because it's ugly as shit. The dog's ugly. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) unless they sold it when it once it turned. Even its even its afterlife character was ugly as shit. You think if it was a smaller dog, it would have been? No, if the dog would have in his afterlife, if he would have been cooler. Yeah. Like turned into like a. Like, like the big flying cat, like a big hero yeah. type thing. But no, he was like a crazy I think, dog the whole time. I think they should have done something short and fat. It's hard to. But that would have to been too up. much, like Moana with the pig. They got they skirted that pig. I know. They said we want the chicken, bro. I didn't see that coming in Moana. I was like until like the fourth time I think that pig was like I'm out of this movie I yeah. got a new agent man <laughs> <laughs> I'm not dealing this with this girl me. keeps going in this water <laughs> yeah <I'm not> <laughs> I am out <laughs> uh, I like how the how the dog like followed him no matter where he went the dog did save him that second when he was not second time when he was in the sinkhole or whatever the dog was the first one that was just like was well, if here he is yeah, it was kind of... Dog came to his rescue a lot. I never felt like he was really in danger. What did his face, uh, mm. my, my girl? Mm-hmm. Because of the dog and because of that big-ass cat. Yeah, they were going to find him anyway, yeah. regardless of where Ernesto put him. Yeah. I kind of wish we could have saw, like, pull, like, a Jumanji move and saw that cat, like, rip his skull off his body. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> but he would have went back together. <laughs> Whoa. That would have been intense. Like Jack, the Jack Black. Because what did the cat do? Just kind of threw him off of the thing? Huh? I wish that cat would have, like, tore his ass up. Yeah, I needed... Because that was, like... It kind of just, like, punted him. It was, like... Yeah. Kicked him off the stage. I wish... I wish the grandmother would have, like... It could have been more violent. No, it didn't need to be violent. 
I guess, I guess not, but still. I feel like the cat no, was more taking up for Miguel than the grandparents were. Hmm. Like, the cat saved his life. Where the hell was his grandparents at? You know? Like, I mean, ordering the cat to, like, do this, do that. And then the cat, like, doing it and taking that guy's head off. Yeah, that cat's going to be pissed once it's feeding time. <laughs> it doesn't get to eat anything. Yeah, oh, it's hungry. Every, there's no meat on anybody. Hungry. <laughs> He's going to be taking it down. He's a spirit animal. And she's probably giving him all of her food that they give her from the real life. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. She's burping up some blue stuff. I don't know what she'd be eating. What? She was burping up some blue Who? stuff. What? Who was? The, the cat? The cat. She didn't burp up anything. She was blowing blue stuff, I thought. She was like... Oh, that was like a magic power type thing to see his footprint. Man. Stop. I'll <laughs> kick you in your face. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> more violence. More violence. Your natural life than yours. No, we don't need more violence. No. <laughs> I loved it, though. It was a good one. I'm glad we watched it. I'm, I'm glad you finally watched it. I... I'd watch it again. Uh, it would? Yeah. That's probably going to be a movie I show the kids, and then we sit and we watch it every day for like two weeks. <laughs> oh, that's how it goes. Until we're, That'd be a movie we'd watch until we got sick of it. It's like a mm. Secret Life of Pets, Moana. Oh, my gosh, what, dude. What was I missed? Every freaking night. I want to watch Max. That's what Blaine calls Secret, Secret uh, Life. Life of Pets. Yeah. I want to watch Max. <laughs> you see, I, the, the thing about... The comparison, we'll probably wrap up this thing here in a minute. We've been <clears throat> talking for a long time. Yeah, like for a minute. Uh, I don't know if I can continuously watch this. Really? It's difficult for me to watch. I like crying. You do? I, say, <laughs> I like it. I see, like that, that feeling of feeling sad for somebody else or something else. Somebody else? It's feeling sad for ourselves. Oh, yeah, anybody. but... It's, it's talking about, like, time and... Oh yeah, you know, I mean it made me think longevity. about it made me think about my grandmother dying, but then it's still like I know how I felt when she passed, but this kid's young in this yeah, movie. He's young. Yeah. <laughs> it made me think about more about my how my kids would feel about my mom's passing. Right. Right. I think it just kind of gives you a perspective on uh, your mortality. Mm-hmm. Like heads up, you know. We're only going to age to, you know, so old. And when we do, you know, it's important that, you know, you remember those mm-hmm. that, you know, have passed. Yeah. But uh, anyways, the uh, the movie has visuals, has grade A acting, mm-hmm. has... The, I couldn't believe it when you told me the kid sang the actual character. The actual actor sang that sang his songs. Yeah, I believe that character did all of his singing. All did of he his... had the sweetest little voice singing? Yeah, it, it was, was cute. <laughs> That's I love that. <laughs> I love big his old little, eyes. His kid voice. I love hearing kid voices sing. Yeah, the uh, the actor was phenomenal. I I would be curious to see if they did a. Uh, like motion capture you know like uh put a thing on his like a yeah to actually face. get like his his mannerisms and how he talks facial movements yeah while he's saying and stuff i'm not uh, they uh, didn't do that in moana did they no i don't think they did although i think we're pretty close to doing it i liked moana's uh actor's voice the uh the kid's names uh for my gal is Anthony Gon- Gonzalez. Gonzalez. The uh, the same director uh, did monsters, monsters, and he was. Uh, oh, Nemo. Yeah, he did Nemo as well. Uh, he he's been on some some big things, uh, and so he knows exactly what he's doing. Toy Story two, Toy Story three. Mm-hmm. Uh, co-director of uh did you see monsters i did i loved monsters did you like monsters? Inc., yeah yeah this i i think this guy knows what he's doing um i know that i think i cried in monsters inc did you? i think something happened with the little girl it made me cry i kind of remember when she loses the big blue guy I yeah think. she's it's kind of sad 
Uh, Anything, like I think that's what made me more upset in this movie was anytime you see a kid upset over else. an adult. Losing something? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. The, uh, I think his name is uh, Lee Un- Unkirk. He, uh, I think he's a great director. And I, I look forward to anything he does in the future. Mm-hmm. Let me see the front of it. I'm not saying that. So, this is, just looking at the front, I know this is difficult on a podcast, but if you were looking at the front, there's there's a skeleton, and it's Miguel playing guitars on the the leaf bridge, and it says Coco above it, and it really, from marketing, I think it's difficult. Difficult to say, let's go see this movie as a family. I love it. Huh? I like it. You do? I would, yeah. I like how bright it is, the bridge. I mean, it looks fun. <laughs> it catches. And stuff. But if I didn't know if it, it wasn't a fantastic movie already, I don't think I would see it. Yeah. I don't know what would capture my... I, I think I think less would have been more for me. I feel like we don't ever see anything with that much going on in a... In the city? Yeah. Not anything. Yeah. Like, I've not seen another, like, movie cover with as much going on in it, like, as that. Yeah. The bridge... I, the dog, all the people. I like how the colored, how colored the bridge is. Yeah, I'd say it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it looks visually stunning. It just, it's kind of obscure and doesn't really tell you too much. It just looks like, what the heck is going on? I don't, I like you it. You don't think that, Mm-mm. like, Co- I, I see Coco, I see a skeleton, and I see a, a, a young Mexican boy. You know? And a dog. And Disney. If it didn't say Disney at the top and Pixar, I'm not sure if anyone would have saw this. I like it. Which is why it worries me. And it came out in November? Yeah. It came out after... uh, Right before Thanksgiving. Right before Thanksgiving and right after Halloween. So I thought it was odd odd placing, you know. They kind of wanted to be a family movie. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know... So what is this? This is just a different. Yeah, that's just a different setting for it. The. Uh, I feel like I would have liked this. It's a different this different more. poster. It shows this poster shows Miguel walking up the bridge with the dog, kind of looking uh, curious with uh, the Coco title above it, and I, I, it does look a little bit more curious and. Uh, well, something about the skeleton doesn't sell me on the movie. It looks Roger, a little yeah. bit too. Uh, hmm. uh, not playful, but uh, young. It, it looks like it's geared toward a young audience. Yeah, you know, with the like little boys because it's a skeleton. Yeah, yeah, it's a little, it's a little cartoon skeleton. It, it kind of throws me off in the marketing department. So I think they might have should have left that off. And even, even with the title name Coco, it mm. was kind of honestly like a spoiler. Not really, not for me. Not for you? No. No. I wasn't going into it, knowing the name, I wasn't, I had no idea who was going to be Coco, or what it was going to be, if it was going to be a person. Yeah, I mean, when I first watched it, 30 minutes in, 30, 40 minutes in, I was like, wait, what's going on, and who's Coco? Yeah. I forgot who it was. Yeah. Just like, the relevance. Yeah, I was like, "Why is Coco relevant still?" Other the than name. other than I know that she's gonna she's gonna die. But yeah, name of it could have been "Remember Me," and I would it would have made a little bit not more sense. But I heard that they wanted to name it the Dias de la Mortos or whatever the uh, name of the Day of the Dead is. Yeah, they wanted to copyright that as the movie. Gotcha. Which is like. The equivalent of like copywriting Christmas, yeah. as a as a movie title, mm. and they wanted to own it. Hallmark Disney pulls did. Pulls it off all the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if they can call it just, just straight up Christmas though. Yeah. But uh, okay. anyways. Wrap it up. Yeah, we'll wrap it up. Uh, it's been a good one. Uh, so, do you have any regrets seeing this and not seeing this in theaters? Yeah. Yeah. I wish I would have saw that in theaters. Would have paid for it? 
Yeah. Full price. Yeah. Full price theater price. Yep. Um, without movie pass. Oh, without a movie pass. Yeah, I agree. I, w- I was glad I saw it and I didn't see it with a movie pass at all. Uh, the uh, movie pass obviously makes it easier to go. It makes it cheaper. So I was I was thrilled to pay full price to go see something like this that, you know, people look like they knew exactly what they were doing. Yeah. And they put, their, you know, their heart and soul into it, you know, into the singing, especially, you know, yeah. you want to talk about the soul. But I actually heard that they had sent this uh, movie over to Mexico uh, around four or five different times to go test the audience to make sure that it was, you know, audience approved. Yeah. But, uh, I, I, I mean, you can I like it. the, I like it having a good bit of the, the language, the Spanish speaking. Yeah. I mean, I liked it. I like hearing the words. I like, because I mean, even though I don't know what they're saying, you kind of got what they meant. Kind of. You and, can, you can kind of, I, it's still, there were moments where I would, I wish someone was here who could translate it for me. Right. Or at least they had flashed it up on the screen just maybe for a second or. Yeah. Just, just. But I liked it. Yeah. I liked how it had a good. <laughs> Had a good amount of the Spanish language. Yeah. There's probably no one I wouldn't recommend it to. But, um, this has been the Lucky Dog Podcast Coco Review. Spoiler review. Oh, now you're telling us spoilers. <laughs> yeah. Spoiler <laughs> review. <laughs> until, until next time. It's been, it's been a good one. You'll be stuck here forever. What? I'm a big fan. <laughs> Never forget how much your family loves you. It's almost sunrise. One cannot deny who one is meant to be. It's you! I am terribly allergic. But Dante doesn't have any hair. And I don't have a nose. And yet, here we are. It's you!